in the last session we discussed various materials available for the single point cutting tools we saw their characteristics uh, their applications then we discussed this uh, concept of machinability also now we have a better idea that machinability could not be a generalized term it is going to be dependent of the application basically whether uh, material removal rate is expected to be higher uh, surface finish is to be uh, uh, better or uh, if you are not willing to have any surface alterations so depending upon such a things we need to customize this word machinability that we saw yesterday and now we have a better idea of this one so now next thing we are about to begin with is, is the <coughs> tool coating now <coughs> the requirement of tool coating or why do we need to go for tool coatings is in many cases we saw the development of materials the first material was being used is carbon steel then came into existence the high speed steel once the tailor discovered that heat treatment process the researchers able to convert normal steel into high speed steel by an uh, by applying an alloying process and once that high speed steel was developed there were uh, some additional materials that was developed afterwards that alloy tools were there then carbides were there polycrystalline materials were there and single crystal material now we know that as material strengths are expected to have certain characteristics what characteristics are there when you want to choose a material for a cutting tool the characteristics like hot hardness is there and another is toughness now these characteristics are going to contradict each other if you add some elements to a base material to increase its hot hardness there is going to be decrease in this toughness value because with increase in this hot hardness or normal hardness the brittleness also keeps on increasing and with increase in brittleness the toughness value gets on uh, decreasing now the decrease in this toughness is going to make that tool material susceptible to failure by impact loading while having operation if there is certain inclusion in the workpiece material some impurity is there that has got some more hardness compared to base workpiece material or even instead of a plain cut if there is certain step or something like that that is going to result into sudden increase in the cutting forces so when that cutting force increase is there at that instant there would be variable load acting on the cutting tool and that may cause failure of the cutting tool so solution to all these things is lies in this slide tool coatings so what we do in case of tool coating suppose there is a cutting tool and there is a workpiece material i want to increase hardness of the cutting tool i want to increase inertness of the cutting tool because we know that the inertness or the term opposite to that is chemical affinity of the two materials about each other 
that could be at room temperature or even at elevated temperature if there is some chemical affinity between cutting tool and workpiece material then there is going to be a certain chemical reaction taking place and that will cause a considerable wear in the cutting tool okay so if you want to increase hardness if you want to provide certain toughness to the material if you want to increase that or if you want to have that chemical inertness or if you want to provide some lubrication also that you want to reduce the frictional force between cutting tool and workpiece material okay so achieving all these properties without changing the properties of base material right why we are not willing to change the properties of base material because the material has been chosen based on those properties that material should have certain hardness or it should have certain hot hardness that at elevated temperature also there should not be any change in base properties of the material right and we are not willing to alter those properties but in addition to that one these additional properties are expected to be associated associated with the cutting tool and we can offer few of those properties or all of those properties by coating this workpiece surface with some additional material okay so that is the basic requirement of the coating by applying coating you can provide certain additional features to a cutting tool without changing its basic properties okay so what we can offer with the coatings lower friction higher adhesion higher resistance to wear and cracking diffusion barrier and even you can pro provide hot hardness and impact resistance okay so as i said lubrication is nothing but the A reduction in the friction higher adhesion means when you coat the cutting tool surface the coating strength or the ability of the coated material to stick to cutting tool surface is nothing but the its adhesion capacity so that would be higher so usually when you coat certain material with some additional uh, coating that coating will not break easily then higher resistance to wear and cracking so as i said you can increase its hardness further even if you are using a carbide tool its hardness can be further increased how you can increase its uh, hardness simply coat the surface of the carbide tool with some ceramic material right so that way you can increase its hardness further so increase in hardness will reduce the wear rate then acting as a diffusion barrier that is you can coat a tool material with some material that will reduce the chemical affinity between the tool and uh, cutting material or uh, sorry tool and workpiece material so that way the diffusion diffusion is nothing but the transfer of cutting tool material to the workpiece material okay and that also can be avoided and last one is higher hot hardness and impact resistance just like you can provide resistance to wear and cracking you can provide more hardness and impact resistance also that you can coat a ceramic material with some material that has got better toughness and better toughness is nothing but the resistance to impact loading okay so these are the features that you can provide with coatings or that's why we need to go for the coating of the cutting tool materials now additional characteristics of the coating uh, uh, coatings are 
usually if cutting tool has a certain life then its life could be increased by 10 times if you coat it with some additional material so we can have better life with coatings then you can go for higher cutting speeds also because if you have provided that more hot hardness more impact resistance obviously you can increase the cutting speed with the same cutting tool that was not possible with the with uncoated tools and if you can increase the cutting speed you can obviously reduce the production cost or overall production cost because tool life has got better production rate has got better and if all these things have got improved obviously the production cost is going to be reduced okay so that could be the additional features that you can get with the coatings now what are the commonly used coating materials there are few materials that has got certain characteristics that and that you can coat on the other materials the first one is titanium nitride then titanium carbide is there titanium carbonitride is there and even you can coat the alumina ceramic also just we saw the example if you want to increase the hardness of carbide you can further coat it with the ceramic layer so that its hardness can be further increased now when you want to apply all these material coatings on the tool surface there are two commonly used methods available first one is called as chemical vapor deposition vapor deposition and second is called as <coughs> physical vapor deposition now we are not going to talk about these techniques because that is not a part of our curriculum but you can but you can google it and you can go through these techniques that how exactly those are being carried out the first one is chemical vapor deposition commonly called as cvd and another is physical vapor deposition called as pvd okay now the last part of this unit is cutting fluids or you can call them as coolants as well and their methods of application so this last part is going to be dedicated to cutting fluids their characteristics types of cutting fluids and their methods of application so let's begin with the need of applying cutting fluids why do we need to go for cutting fluids or what we get when you use cutting fluids so usually or we have discussed this one in the past that we know that whenever you provide or apply cutting fluid it has got certain advantages what advantages are there first one by applying cutting fluid you can reduce the friction between cutting tool and workpiece if this is a cutting tool this is workpiece we know that there is going to be friction between cutting tool and workpiece and that is going to cause wear of the cutting tool as well as it is going to affect the workpiece characteristics also there could be some friction marks on the workpiece surface or there could be increase in temperature there could be surface alterations because of increase in temperature there might be some changes in properties of the workpiece material if that temperature is beyond certain limit right so all these things can be avoided by using cutting fluids or coolants so you can reduce friction and wear second cool the cutting zones so in this zone where there is a direct interaction between cutting tool and workpiece the workpiece material is being converted into chip in this zone we know that there is a primary shear zone secondary shear zone and third friction zone between cutting tool and workpiece 
those three zones are going to be sources of heat generation and if you want to uh, remove the heat or if you want to reduce the heat then you need to focus on these three zones so if you are able to cool the surface where cutting tool and workpiece are interacting with each other you can have control on that temperature and that could be possible with the cutting fluids then <clears throat> reduced forces and energy consumption so it is but obvious if forces generated are reducing then amount of energy required to remove the same material is going to be reduced because now forces value has got reduced and if i talk specifically the cutting fluids are going to deal with the frictional forces to a more extent because by applying cutting fluids you can reduce the friction and with reduction in friction you can reduce the temperature generation and all next flush away the chips from the cutting zone so that is also one of the most important feature because if i take an example of drilling operation so this is a drill bit that is going to be penetrated into the workpiece surface as long as it is removing material from the surface the chips are going to be easily displaced away from the cutting zone but when this drill bit enters the workpiece to a certain depth then the chips are need to be taken away from this zone right and taking away those chips from the uh, this zone is going to be one of the difficult task right so if you could bring a high pressurized cutting fluid in this zone that can expel these removed chips out of the a uh, metal cutting zone this is about the drilling same can be applied to turning operations also right so if you could direct cutting fluid in the uh, tool workpiece interaction zone you can easily expel the form chips and uh, last one is <clears throat> protect the machine surface from environmental corrosion now this is uh, need to be discussed in some other orientation how application of cutting fluids is going to protect the machined surface now before the, uh, for that one we need to think of what are the cutting fluids available out there usually if you use water or water based cutting fluids then this water based cutting fluids are going to cause corrosion of the machine surface because while uh, material removal is being takes place the temperature of that workpiece is going to increase and at elevated temperature if it comes in contact with water then obviously there is going to be corrosion of the workpiece surface then how it is going to improve the life so this concept we can apply when we add some additives to this water based lubricants or if you used oil based uh, coolants then you can improve the characteristic of the characteristics of the workpiece surface okay so that way you can protect the machine surface from the environmental corrosion next types of the cutting fluids 
four major types of the cutting fluids first one is oils then emulsions then semi synthetic and last one is synthetic now here what we need to consider is the most prominently used constituent elements of the cutting fluids are oil and water okay but the use of oil has got certain disadvantages what disadvantages are there because if you are using a simple water as a cutting fluid you can use it in whatever extent you want and after use you can simply throw it out in the open atmosphere because it's just a water okay but when you add oil to this water or when you are using oil as a cutting fluid you cannot throw it out in the open atmosphere so there is going to be an issue of disposal of the cutting fluids so what we usually do we try to minimize the use of oil in the cutting fluids so that we can deal with this environmental issue so in all these cutting fluids you will find that there is decrease in the use of oil first one is pure oil emulsion that oil content is reduced synthetic that oil content is further reduced and in uh, synthetic oil is completely eliminated okay let's discuss individual uh, uh, lubricant or individual cutting fluid first one is oil so from name itself we can easily get that it's are uh, pure oils that are used for the cutting so it could be a mineral oil animal oil or vegetable oil but in a, a pure form we there will not be any additives added to the <clears throat> uh, that oils the applications you will find when you uh, go for finishing of the internal surface of the hole in piston cylinder arrangement in our uh, diesel and petrol engines when you want to finish the internal surface of that bore that in that operation usually <coughs> hobbing process is applied and in that process these oils are used as a cutting fluids we don't use any other uh, cutting fluids out of the uh, following that emulsion will not be there synthetics will not be there and even uh, semi synthetics will not be there so purely oils will be used so what are the uh, additional things uh, that describes the application of oil when <clears throat> the speeds or cutting speeds are very low so we know that when cutting speeds are very for generation so be okay so because of this low temperature you can go for the oils but if that temperature range is more then we cannot go for oils the next solution would be emulsion so what we do in case of emulsions we take oil plus water but we know that when you try to add oil plus water naturally they don't mix with each other and to mix them with each other we need to add some additives some surfactants will be there when you add those surfactants to this mix uh, mixture what what it uh, does it will reduce the surface tension of the oil that way you can uh, split the oil into small particles because of reduction in surface tension and then you can mix it with the water and that you can use as a cutting fluids in semi synthetic that oil content will be further reduced so what we do there would be a very little mineral oil diluted in water and there would be 
uh, improved uh, application of the uh, cutting fluids. So what we do, we use such uh, additives that will reduce surface tension of oil further down. What surface tension we got in emulsion, that surface tension will further reduce in case of semi-synthetics because the oil quantity has further reduced. So its surface tension will be further reduced so that you can uh, split that oil into further smaller particles. And that way you can have effective use of that lubricant. And last one is synthetic. In case of synthetic, there would be a certain chemicals and additives that are diluted in water and there will not be any oil in the synthetic lubricants. So these are the various types of the lubricants that are available with us. Next, methods of application. Now there are four methods. First one is flooding, second one is mist, third one is high pressure and last one is through cutting tool system. So these are quite simple to discuss. First one is flooding. From the name itself, a large amount of cutting fluid is used through hose pipes and all. The quantity could be up to 10 liters per minute for the single point cutting tool. And when it comes to multi-point cutting tools like milling and grinding, that quantity could be 225 liters per minute. So large amount of cutting fluid will be used and the cutting zone will be completely flooded with the uh, cutting fluid. That's why the uh, application method is called as flooding. Next one is mist. In mist, what we do, we take cutting fluid and mix it with air, a pressurized air. So you will get an aerosol. Right? So that will be mixture of air and uh, small particles of those cutting fluids. And when you apply that aerosol through a jet, you can have better effect of that uh, cutting fluid. Additionally, in flooding, this whole region, I'm talking about first method, in first method, the whole region will be flooded with the cutting uh, fluid. So what exactly happening in the cutting zone will not be visible. And that limitation can be overcome in case of mist cooling, right? Because it's a mixture of air and cutting fluid, and that is under high pressure uh, directed at the cutting zone so that you would have better visibility as well as better effect of the cutting fluid also. But limitation is, there is one limitation because it is a mixture of air and lubricant or air and cutting fluid that may uh, sustain around the machining uh, machine or that may mix with the atmosphere around the machine and there might be a chances of inhalation of that mixture by operator and persons nearby and to avoid that one there has to be a proper venting system so that that should not uh, mix with the atmosphere around the machine and it should not have a negative effect on the operator and uh, any person nearby. Okay. Then third one is high pressure system. It is uh, like flooding only, but what we do in case of high pressure system, the pressure range for flooding was 700 to 1400 kilopascal, whereas for high pressure, it is 5.5 to 35 megapixel. So pressure of that cutting fluid uh, will be increased to a higher extent and through hose pipes and all that fluid will be directed to the machining zone or wherever it is required. And as pressure is very high, it also help in cheap breaking. We saw the cheap breaker in uh, unit number two. We know why that cheap breaker is required. And this high pressurized cutting fluid also can serve as a cheap breaker. So that could be 
additional advantage of this high pressure system and last one is through the cutting tool system so the example that i took of drilling as long as drill bit is at the surface that cutting fluid can be easily directed to a machining zone but when it enters in a certain depth then tool would be in a rotary motion and whatever a space available is there in between the fluids through that space chips will be coming out so penetrating the cutting fluid in machining zone will be very difficult so what can we do make a hole in the cutting tool itself and through that hole provide the cutting fluid so this in this method there would be a provision made in the cutting tool itself there would be some passages provided in the cutting tool and through which a high pressure cutting fluid will be applied so that it can it can uh, reach to the unreachable zones and it can cool that zone or uh, that additional properties we can get so the two methods you can see in drilling a small through hole in the body of drill itself and in boring also there will be hole made in the shank of the tool holder and through which uh, the cutting fluid will be applied so that is the last one through the cutting tool system from the name you can get it easily so these are the various methods used for application of the cutting fluid first one is flooding second one is mist third one is high pressure and last one is through the cutting tool itself so these are the few theoretical questions that could be framed on uh, whatever content we have seen and if you want to take a look of multiple choice questions visit google classroom i have updated uh, five six quizzes yesterday so now there might be nine or ten quizzes attempt all the quizzes so that you can uh, prepare in a better way for the test and mid semester examination